Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth episode of Cinemafia. I am your main host, Lewis. Oh, to my oh left my is... Oh Jesus uh, I'm the real main host, <laughs> Andrew. And I'm the backup host, I know who I am, I'm Asher. And today, Asher, I'm going to pass it off to you for just a second. Oh, what are we looking at today? Uh, well, I'm looking at a table. <laughs> Dude, well, actually, hilarious. we watched... Tell us what we're fucking watching. Oh. <laughs> well, we watched a film called Phantom of the Paradise. It was directed by Brian De Palma. And I'll just read you out a little Google uh, blurb of it. After record producer Swan, oh my God, this is really bad. Okay, let's start again. <laughs> Lick those lips. <laughs> <words. laughs> Lubricate. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. All right, here we go. Try again. Scene. Go After on. record producer Swan... Paul Williams, steals the music of songwriter Winslow Leach, William Finlay, and gives it to one of his bands, Leach sneaks into Swan's offices. Catching Leach, Swan frames him for dealing drugs, which lands him in prison. After Leach breaks out and again attempts to sabotage Swan's empire, an accident crushes his face. Leach then dons a costume and becomes the Phantom, intent on ruining Swan while saving singer Phoenix, Jessica Harper, from a terrible fate. That was really well done, and you oh. didn't mess up at all on that. Thanks, man. Got so, it, got uh, it first breath. time. Got it first time. Yeah, so, so directed, sorry, by Brian De Palma. Also, um, screenplay was written by Brian De Palma. Uh, and these songs uh, that we heard um, were written by Paul Williams, who played uh, Swan, the uh, record producer. Really? Yeah. Huh. I don't believe you. You're what? lying to me right now. <laughs> well, it's just the sort of stuff a little Google will get you, boys. Wow, so, it's amazing the wealth of knowledge that we have today at our fingertips. Yeah, so yeah. Andrew, would you like to quickly explain for our lovely, handsome viewers the Mafia game? Sure. Uh, handsome and beautiful viewers. Yes. Yeah, don't get that wrong again. <laughs> Sorry, <Please>. guys. <laughs> In fact, just call them all beautiful. I mean, <laughs> okay. Maybe pro- beautiful bastards, We probably perhaps. only An amorphous ha- blob of yeah. people. We probably only have beautiful women listening to our podcast as well anyway. That's pretty right, safe. It's pretty safe. Yeah. Uh, regardless, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Cinemafia is the show where we review a film, but... It's crazy because one, <laughs> <laughs> but it's crazy because one of us is lying about their true opinion. Uh, so you we do that to me, would you, boys? No, wouldn't I be wouldn't lying. because I'm not the mafia. Well, I wouldn't do it to you either, Andrew. And that's the thing; it's a cross with the game Mafia, where you sit around in a circle and it's a party game, and you work together because the mafia are trying to kill everyone off, but the village is trying to track them down, find out who they are. So we've been our assigned cards. One of them told us who the mafia was and they're going to present a disingenuous opinion well it's up to the others to find out who is lying if you would like to follow along this episode of cinemafia knowing who the mafia is then go to tinyurl.com forward slash cinemafia spoilers let's get back to the show yeet and uh this week's cards uh we chose from pokemon there were two horsies and one trap inch so whoever the mafia is they got the trap inch card mm. i don't believe that is a very strong pokemon uh andrew can you confirm or deny uh trap inch evolves into something no but... no andrew he wants you to look at your card and, <laughs> and give the stats oh um yeah I... because you're the mafia right and you have no. the trap inch yeah because i don't and so i can't actually tell you the stats my card here is not the mafia card but that's neither here nor there oh oh so it's lewis yeah, okay. yeah, it's definitely me. I, I brought this all on myself. Uh, but uh, no, I don't know much about Trap Inch, but it definitely doesn't see much competitive use. Okay, check out the next episode where we're going to be reviewing Trap Inch, the Pokemon. <laughs> Quite right. Anyways, uh, would we like to go around the table and give our ratings for Phantom yes. of the Paradise? Yes, what, what we did this time was we dealt out the cards so we know, well, each person knows who, they're, who they are to begin with. And then we... Then write down our opinion uh, on a scale of one to ten. Because we didn't, we didn't want to go around. Because then the person who's giving their rating last, we feel they might be ratcheting um, it up. Yeah, they might be affected by the other ratings, and so if they're the mafia or not, they might try to change their rating based on that. And we didn't really want that. You know, we wanted this from from the heart. We want everyone to give their their pure ratings. So that's what we've done. Yeah. So uh, let's reveal uh, our opinions then. Okay. What we rated yeah, what have you out, got out of ten. I have given this film an eight point five out of ten. Oh, pretty high. Pretty high, Andrew. I have given this film a 3.5 out of 10. Oh my gosh. And I've given it a 7 out of 10. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen. The, mafia, the mafia is Andrew. Is. It's definitely this, Andrew. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is insane. Go on. Defend your ridiculous rating. That that film was atrocious. <laughs> oh God. It was so bad. In what way? Oh, yes. Develop, develop. It was terrible, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh gosh. That that film sucked. Okay, what 
please. Mm-mm. He seems mm-hmm. like he's being genuine. He's being a lot more genuine and, and um, riled up than he was when he was lying about Requiem for a Dream. So <laughs> I'm not sure. We we should try to minimize as much reference to previous ones. Uh, but then it makes we... the fans want to. You fans, you got to go back and listen to the other episodes to get the context <laughs> yeah, now because you're so enthralled. <laughs> Stop right now because <laughs> they just love listening to cinema Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so I wrote a lot of bad things down because this was a really bad film that was atrocious. The opening song isn't even that good. That's that, a, he's he's the mafia. He is the, lying. That extends to all the music. He Ooh. is the mafia. <laughs> this is this is so this is too quick. Asher, we got to work together. He is clearly the no. mafia. <laughs> <laughs> so so either I, either Lewis and I are geniuses, or or you know, you're being genuine. And Lewis secretly hates this film, and I'm just I'm just a fuckwit who yeah. liked it. Yeah, he's <laughs> Asher's always the ploy who gets like pulled Fuck. to either side. Uh, go on, Andrew. Go on with your silly, made-up mafia no, opinions. Fuck, fuck off. <laughs> Carry on. Uh, the music was poor. Uh, the only good <laughs> singer in the film was the woman who played Phoenix. Uh, and even then, she probably didn't even sing it herself, did she? No. I I, because, it looked like it was dubbed. It was yeah. dubbed because her microphone was moving around. But yeah. that's not to say that she didn't record the dub, but it wasn't, you know, on scene sound. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, High energy stuff. There... <laughs> was a lot of really childish things in the film that were not funny and out of place that I was expecting that I would be more likely to see in, like, high school tier drama. Like, the first, one of the scenes where um, Swan is like, hey, this guy has some pretty good music, and he, says, and he sends his buddy to go track him down and be like, hey, we want you for the record deal. And then... The guy starts talking. He's like, "Yeah, my music's based off Faust, and it's really interesting." And then the guy's like, "Yeah, we'll get, we'll get the juicy fruits to sing it." And then he stands up and slams like immediately <laughs> slams him against the wall. That is just so unrealistic. Oh, uh, okay, I, I'd say that it's kind of uh, laying down the kind of character that Winslow is—someone who's explosive, reactive—and we see that throughout the film that he, you know, goes to crazy. Lengths. I I just thought it was stupid. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? <laughs> Lewis and I, they're not mafia. I yeah. think that you are stupid, Andrew, even though you're doing your job. Yep. And you're doing it bloody well. Yeah. Like you Fuck can, off! Like, you can't help that you got the trap inch card. It's not your fault. This and- is bullshit! <laughs> hey, Van, don't care. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, my God! Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, I look forward to seeing how fucking Lewis, Lewis is going hard. <laughs> I always go hard. Ball hard, play hard. Ball is <laughs> life, shit, okay? Man. Um. Okay, so I'll do some quick notes that I didn't like about it. Uh, it was just very... trying to look through all of the ones that are actually <laughs> negative. <and laughs> you got to sift nope. through all oh, your positive uh, comments. Oh, it was terrible. Oh. It was very melodramatic. Yeah. Uh, the pace was too quick. Uh, it, there wasn't enough development. That was for... one of my positives about the film, actually. <laughs> 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 that eye roll, bruh. There wasn't enough uh, development in very pla- in um enough places. Uh, there were two scenes where there were extended half and half cuts. Uh, that just went on and on and on. That's a game of something I loved. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, what what a dramatic uh, face palm he just did. <laughs> yeah, really. You really got to go like the thing so that they can hear it on. Yeah, the man. Mic. This is an audio medium. Yeah, you can't just have me save the day with the whole face palm. Medium. We're, we're cutting. We're cutting Andrew off. Bro, go on. I, I know. Call. Isn't it fun? <laughs> yeah. This <laughs> is some bullshit. It was. So he meets the woman. He meets the woman. Phoenix. He meets Phoenix. On the stairwell. They immediately sing some random duet with this woman he's never met before. You're, you're like, correct. That was were, kind of weird. There were so many parts of it that were just childish and nonsensical uh-huh. to the point where I thought it may have been written by a literal child or high school student. I could have done something better than this. No joke. <laughs> I mean, he could have, because I, I did actually plagiarize one of Andrew's oh. uh, plays that he wrote yeah. once, handed it in, got an excellence. Oh, so, wow. he, you know, he probably So, could at least I'm on the high school tier as well. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much You're like, all on high school Much tier. like how I've thought about this film. <laughs> we should have that play actually, like, adapted to the stage or movie one day, and then we can actually review it as a film and see how the directors uh, brought Andrew's <laughs> idea to life. That'd be <laughs> Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Look, uh, it's... Really easy to just shit on one person who has a differing opinion, even though I'm not the fucking mafia. It is. So yes, it's fun as well. <laughs> why don't one of you go and I'll shit on your opinion? I'd be happy to go. Hey, Lewis, how about you go? Okay. 
everything that maybe this is just a difference of opinion but everything andrew listed about this film like it's being silly you know like you know a lot of uh, plot contrivances i love that this isn't a film that's going like full on on story it's meant to be totally absurd and that's what i loved all the characters have like these weird little mannerisms about them um they really don't fit into the world and the world itself is so weird like all the settings they all feel really like disjointed you know there's like some very strong lighting like even the camera angles when they're following the characters around in these scenes like when um winslow's going into the recording um you know like what do you, yeah, you call like person. the building and that yeah. film sort of you know it's a low angle following him around as he's going through like you know uh, into the room he's looking around i just felt really disorientating that's what the entire film felt like and i thought it was crazy i loved the music i thought it felt it um fit in really well with the like chaotic atmosphere like all those songs where people are just going crazy these crazy costumes the fans are just going absolutely wild um and then there's especially at the end where it's like there's all this drama these people like dying um like limbs being cut off people aren't paying attention they're just enjoying the music this was just a totally fun film you know and all i i admit the writing there's so many contrivances you know it's like oh how come um the camera angles and like all these recordings are just perfectly in place for winslow to uh you know find out what's happening with swan i thought it was just totally fun even if there are all these uh you know writing issues lewis you said you liked the sound and the, sorry the, the music i can, love the music can you and i mean we've we've been bagging on andrew together but you've been given your opinions now your turn can you hum a tune that you heard in that song in that film Oh, okay. Um, I think my favorite one would have to be uh, when we first see Winslow when he's first on the um, piano. He's you know. I, it sounds just like actually I can't even remember it. I I, I did also like the 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 soundtrack. Yeah. But I, I I can't really remember any of them. Yeah. I know that the end credits scene kind of sounded like Thomas the Tank Engine, <laughs> which is kind of strange. There's a reason why you can't remember them, because they sucked. I thought that the um the one when we first see, the... well here we have a a phone uh, ringing. Let's just I'll be right literally back. pause the podcast <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you disrupted our recording. What's up? <laughs> see ya. Bye. <laughs> that may or may not be in the final cut. <laughs> <laughs> that was so rude. Oh, he should know when we're down here recording. No, that's <laughs> that was rude. Anyways, what you was know. I what was I saying? Um, the uh, um, sorry um. The music sucked. That's why you didn't remember. Any I mean, of the things. I, 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 though you're right. I can't remember the the music. I remember going, "Damn, this is this is some tunes." Yeah, I remember how I felt I at the moment. Listen to again. I want to yep. search out the soundtrack. Although I, I would actually prefer, I hope rather that the soundtrack that one can access is a is a higher production quality. Uh, yeah, without like fuller the, songs. Yeah, without the crowd noise behind it. And everything. Yeah, yeah. But 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 regardless. Uh, I rated the film lower than you did, mm. seven instead of eight point five. You did three point five. Yep. Uh, it was it was a strange film. Uh, I wouldn't say it was a great film. I just I thought it was like a solid, um, good film. There were some aspects of it which were dated, but you try not to you know just pick on the dated things like the makeup and some of the um, that the costuming kind of looked pretty yep. you would know, you, gimmicky. Would you say that this film is a better film than The Counselor? Yes, absolutely. Oh, that's really hard. Yeah, because that is a huge difference in your rating. I know what you're trying to say. It's like, not obviously like, the counselor is a very the, well made. film. The counselor is a well made film. Decent acting, strange story, boring story. Yes, not wild or mm. crazy like this film was. Right. How much of a difference does that warrant between giving it a seven and a three point five? I would say that the writing of the counselor was. Um, better because it's like okay here's the start here are these characters and you know obviously we went through our issues with the counselor but i understand what you mean like the the, the story is well better put together but here i don't think they're going for the writing they're going for like these like crazy moments of you know like we see this character just the pace is going blistering oh he's you know he's an up-and-coming star he's in prison now he's like this you know crazy guy in a mask trying to get revenge i i that was what i really loved even though i can say as i've said you know all these plot contrivances i just looked past them because the experience way itself too was so rushed. fun the first half was way too rushed and then and the second half was boring and slow in comparison. And boring is like, I don't know, not even the right word because I wouldn't call it a boring film. It was just horrible and bad. It was a waste of my time, much like The Counselor yeah. was. Were there not like highlights of like moments where you're like, oh, damn, this is really interesting. For me, it was um, when he has an augmented voice and that's being developed. Yeah, that and, was in awesome. That, in that sort of Star Wars style thing. Before Star Wars was a thing, might I add. This oh, was, okay. I think it was 
released two years before Star this, Wars. This was, was a 74 year? film, was it not? Yeah, yeah. something like that. Uh, three years before, 1977, right? I might be wrong. I have no clue. I'm a, I'm a Don't look at me for this. So oh my <laughs> yeah. God. But yeah, that Vader type sort of thing, you know, perhaps that influenced Vader. I've heard a little bit about that. Um, but I really liked um, that character. Uh, beginning with W and his name is now escaping Winslow Winslow I really liked Winslow the yeah. Phantom um, his sort of arc where he gets absolutely fucked over um, you really do uh, what share his, his arc where he's like oh I've, I've been spotted right by Swan and then they're gonna steal his music um, and then they do they do steal his music yeah because he, he doesn't absolutely... want his he doesn't want his music to get dumbed down like the juicy it wasn't fruits a, it wasn't gets, a real sing, arc sing. In, in what sense wasn't it an arc? Uh, an arc is something that takes time and has a proper payoff. This was forced down your throat. I thought there was a payoff. The payoff was that him and Swan both died in the end, and he was able to, uh, I mean, in, the, in a sense, he was able to protect his music in that extent, because and it's like Phoenix. he's going to die. Swan's no longer going to have the rights to the music, and so um, he, he killed himself for, the, you know, for his music, which is playing on the idea of you know, you know, the passion he has for his music, and it's obviously the entire film is based on the you know, supposed corruption of the music industry and how they like, use artists and just leech off literally, of them. The literally, 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 the guy's name, the main character is Leech, and the idea is that they're leeching off of him for his musical ability and making money off of him despite his wishes. So mm-hmm. I, you know, that's like that sort of thing that I appreciated. There were some continuity sort of things or just things that were really convenient that were a bit odd. I, I, I can't remember them actually to mind right now, but I remember going, that's just too easy, too 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 convenient for the plot. Yep. It just makes that work. Um, I didn't mind the the abundance of cameras and the uh, like the camera angles that were actually seen uh, as within the world of of the of the palace this paradise palace that swan has created i think that's kind of just his his you know art his he, whole thing he did have um a secret passageway yeah, yeah to a secret room <laughs> that he shook. went to um, there, were, there were very i just really liked some of the tropes which seemed ahead of its time like sort of implanting these things in the sort of cinematic consciousness and like another thing george lucas stole <laughs> you know well yeah yeah i mean uh, <laughs> apparently brian de palma and george lucas were kind of uh, friends or knew one another and so either he stole it or was influenced but i really <laughs> liked the voice i really liked his voice and um that this was also pre rocky horror picture show yeah um, that's what i was thinking of as well yeah. it, it was very uh not that it was before that but i was like this reminds me of rocky horror picture show but it was actually yeah. before it was oh like, my god the difference between Willy this Wonka. film and the rocky horror picture show is that the rocky horror picture show is good uh-huh <laughs> these yeah. are such weak like one-liners from andrew uh, there was the a mafia at the mafia is getting desperate this over here. is cool. saying. bullshit <laughs> i cannot believe both of you liked this film well there was there was a scene where where swan appeared uh, with a top hat and a big frilly bow, which is just like straight out of Willy Wonka mm. sort of thing. Willy Wonka was before this film. Um, and I really liked how they, they utilized all of these different uh, tropes and even the, some, the, win- the ones that weren't yet tropes, perhaps, um, into this mess, admittedly, a mess of a film, which I'd have to watch again uh, to maybe grasp. Um, and perhaps I'd even rate it lower um, then because I'm in this sort of, uh, period of, of kind of being bewildered by it. Yeah, the honeymoon uh, phase, as, as yeah. it's yeah. Bewildered by it, but kind of, you know, trying as, to actually work out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Work out what I really feel. One thing we haven't really commented on, at least that was a big part for me, was the comedy. I thought this movie was hilarious. That's why I, like with comedy films, I don't really care too much about the writing because it's like, okay, they're trying to you know, loved, get this laughter out of it. I laughed more in the film than you did. I was, there was a lot of moments when I was holding back my laughter because I wasn't oh, sure if yeah, I was going to be the mafia. I was surprised right. that you yeah. were letting that out, Andrew. Yeah, exactly. I was surprised because l- listeners, You're viewers, laughing. Andrew was letting out a few hearty chuckles throughout the movie. But my point is, this film was so absurd. It was clearly going for the comedy angle, which is why all these plot contrivances, I can allow them because they're going for this you know, fantastical story with I, all these I, random characters. I don't think it was really going for comedy. I think it, 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 was, just, it was totally it was over the top. Strain, it was over the top, yeah, but it wasn't going for comedy. It had to be going for comedy. It absolutely uh, had what, to be. What parts that you laughed? a lot like um what parts uh, i think really i think drew? the pure the, the, pure f- melodrama. the funniest yes uh it was extremely melodramatic yeah yeah right and that doesn't necessarily make it funny but the one scene that i did think was quite funny and i laughed a couple of times at was when wesley winslow winslow was running to the record office and he was uh you know being chased by two Barreling guys and, and he was running through it because he wanted to find the record that sort of thing and he makes it to the room and he starts chucking stuff around for no reason. Okay, and yeah, then he yeah. makes his way to the record machine, the record press. And that's how oh, he gets yeah. his hideous scars. That was a bizarre part. Yeah. 
I might add, in several scenes later on, he was missing his makeup. On that side of his face. You mean you could see below his mask? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I didn't really. I didn't really notice. I that. was also paying attention to the makeup of the man who played Beef, and it yep. changed every single time we saw him. Mm. Ooh, and I'm it's not, not joking. necessarily a continuity error. I'm not right because that's. Now that's the thing. I was initially thinking it was a continuity error, yeah. be- but then it happened. Practically every time we saw him, yeah, he's, yeah. he's a nervous. He doesn't. He's just trying to put on all this uh, glitter. However, and, and there was one occasion where it totally was a continuity error. Oh, uh, he was in. He was doing his makeup in front of the mirror, and yeah. then the guy comes in, and he's like, "Hey, blah blah blah. Hey, it's, I'll have a large pepperoni." <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, sure." And then he jumps in the shower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. And, and then he'd when he's in the of... shower, he's got a different piece of makeup on yep and then afterwards after that moment he has a green piece of makeup on his cheek Mm. which is again different uh when he's you know trying to be convinced to go back in after after the psycho moment with the phantom there was one scene where he had a devil's tail piece of makeup uh yeah it was the little m sort of like symbol but with a curly bit at the end i'm i'm tracing it on my face but it might be kind of hard to see these guys (laughs) on the wrong side yeah shit (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh now we that's, like, that's, a, it. that's like slightly a devilish symbol a little mm-hmm. bit yeah uh, and i thought that was kind of funny haha <laughs> i thought there was i thought there were way more um like great comedy moments like it was like those little details like when we have phoenix doing her audition and then after she's doing it she does like that little like cute little dance you know that grooving strange, out the side uh, and uh, yeah uh, that angle, little no, it, it's not angle it's not angle it's Ter- the Theresa may dance where she <laughs> comes on like yeah hey. And also also the stuff where it's like uh, it's beef. He might have been my favorite character. He was hilarious. Like how we see him and he's like screaming away to the song and you think this guy's like really intense and he's got like that very camp stereotypical yeah. gay voice and he does like that dance and he's like he's, he's like struggling to get up and he's got those like um you know like those shoes. those shoes that on. That wasn't funny. I found that hilarious. And also when uh he's like in the in the shower, he's singing I, I think it's implied that he's singing Winslow's song. He's like just throwing the soap around and just really yeah. getting into it. And then Winslow and, comes in. Cuts yeah, and the through. music the music is all building up you know it's like meant to be like a, a parody of psycho i guess yeah, yeah. and then he cuts plunger the one but then he puts a plunger in his, his mouth and his the first yeah. expressions for that i loved i yeah, love that i love that that was just stupid the oh. it of course he died later he should have just killed him there like i i, I, I actually I'm, i understand I, like the issue with the writing but again no, no, i'm saying it's I going for speaking. comedy i'm just saying oh, come here do you no, I think I think Andrew's got more to say on that criticism. Like, why the hell did he, you know, freak out and then just get convinced to sing it anyway? He he, I think because it it's a comedy been, film. I think it would have been better if if uh, that actor beef. That's the perfect had, had defense, really just, isn't it? It's, it's a comedy why film. I like it. Yes. That's why you can cover up because your total comedy bullshit film, opinions. Because with comedy because films, you I, hated this film too. What what do you think I would have given this film? Do you think I thought it was all right, or I would have also given it like you a three would have like liked you? this film less than The Counselor? No way, absolutely not. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we've got some really I'll tense. Read, scenes I'll read you my notes. Yeah, I'll read you all my notes exactly as they are. Well, you can't you can't do that. I mean, that's a bit. Why that don't sort of I ruin read the your notes. game? Like if you literally just oh. read all your notes. That's, okay. uh, you yeah, know. this is actually a cheat card. I could just show you what I wrote. Yeah, that would be cheating. I guess that could be. Yeah. How about I read out my notes? Yeah, yes. but, but, but act like you're only reading the bad bits. Yes. <laughs> but you're actually, you know, reading just everything <laughs> no, that's on the page. My... Okay? I'll read you my oh, notes. No, 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 yeah. yeah. Go for Open it, Andrew. song. Not even that good. Uh, long yeah. music video at the start when he's playing the piano. He's shaking his head around all the time. I love you that. You can't sing yeah. like that. You can't <laughs> sing like that. But that's, that's such, not a, you such a minor You never, can't sing like that. You've never done speed, have you? <laughs> they were all on speed he the hadn't whole time. Done, he hadn't done any speed at that oh, point. Okay. Uh, high school drama scene anger. That was the one I spoke about before. Weird developments. Follow that car. He was kicked out. And then yeah. he was like, follow that car. Where did that Where idea did even car... come from? Where yeah. was How the did car? he know to follow a car? There was no car. Swan wasn't immediately leaving. Why would he follow that car? That's bullshit. Music is constant. The music is constant yep. throughout the film. And it is too loud. Much like sometimes when I peek. <laughs> it is too loud constant music it was oppressive i hated it it made it too busy too chaotic i love i just love that chaos that it created i guess maybe that could just be a pure difference of opinion but yeah i love the chaos that it created with that especially with the split screen where we've got the music on the right side which is like almost overpowering the actual dialogue on the left hand side as the characters backstage is sort of you know preparing to go on stage as um 
Winslow has put the bomb in the car. I really like that because mm, it was it's intense. actually it's like a fun little song. It's like a groovy little song, but, but then stressful. there's also this drama, and you can yeah. see, oh, here's you know everything. Here's like the stage. Here's the finalized product, and here's all the drama that goes on backstage. And part, then it ends with that big explosion. For that part, for that part, I wrote down awesome split screen double action and tension building, so you know I'm not the mafia. <laughs> Fuck you. That and sucks. Fuck you. You're both the mafia. I, Lewis, I think you're a terrible actor. I don't think you enjoyed this film nearly as much as, as you're saying you did. And and Andrew... That's funny because I'm not acting, somehow, so I don't know I how I'm that actor. You're also the mafia. <laughs> that, I, the thing is, yeah. I can believe Asher would like this film, you know, because he's got fucking shit taste. Yeah. <laughs> uh, however, Lewis... Uh, there's no way you liked this film. Oh, that's bad then, because is... when it's revealed that I did like this film, you're just going to think poorly of me outside of the show. Oh, damn, I should have said something like that. <laughs> damn, oh. that would have been such a good idea. That's what it's like for me, because it's like, I think Andrew is lying, but it's like, I want him to be lying, because I enjoyed this film so much that if he genuinely did not like this film, I would feel like, oh, I always res- I always respect Andrew's opinion. Now I feel stupid that I like this and he didn't You don't like have it. to feel stupid. Well, that's how you're it's making me feel, in- Andrew. It's because we're all trying to win. We're trying to get you out of here. Take it from me, Lewis. You don't have to feel stupid to be stupid. <laughs> Asher, and I know that. Asher, notice, whenever I get on the um, attack, as Andrew likes to call it, he always points me out saying, oh, you're being very, you know, on the offensive. You must be the mafia. And he's doing that quite a bit. Would you what? like to explain why there's a difference between when I'm on the offensive, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I must be the mafia, but when you're doing it and getting much more exasperated than I do, as I, as I would like to point out, why does that not imply that you are the mafia in this instance, plus your absurd rating for this film? Go ahead. My absurd rating for this film is the truth. I'm looking in his eyes, viewers, and I do see a sense of genuineness, this, God. which is why I'm confused. This is a, no, he can't lead the conversation. No, he can't. Let's, he can't. Let's, it has to be you. Okay. Um. Uh, let's talk about that moment when the newspaper spun up on the screen and we actually had sufficient time to read everything on the newspaper. That was my favorite that scene. Was my, Lewis, <laughs> Lewis, that was Lewis, my made, Lewis made quite a funny <laughs> joke at that part. He was like, I don't... I don't think we'd be reading. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but the, for real, we had like a long shot of like the main uh, article and then it panned down to like the bit that it wanted yeah, to tell it was us. Yeah, saying Wesley has been killed, killed found like, dead, yeah, but, but he was actually still alive. And then it was sitting on that for like half a minute. It had to, it had it to have been 20 or 30 seconds. I loved it. I loved every It was made for... Second of it. American viewers. <laughs> now, guys, I'm not. Look, this is you know going to be typical. Lewis gives like a pretentious sort of analysis. I'm not saying this is some like amazing groundbreaking moment in the film, but the idea was you see the entire paper, you see the main story is like I'm pretty sure the main story on the on the front page was something to do with Swan's production. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. on the right side it was like news. I saw it was like something to do with like British taxes. Tax, yeah. And then that's why they scroll down and they scroll down for quite a bit. Then you get to the small little article and it's like, oh yeah, here's Winslow. Here was this you know guy. He did some music and now he's dead. The intent was you're seeing like this the massive article on the paper goes to swan who's actually leached off of leech and that's why you know it's just a little moment where it's you know getting across the um the theme of the film which is that you know the corruption of the music industry living off the people that sort of idea yeah and again i'm not saying that's some groundbreaking moment but it's like there's one of those little details that i liked about the film that just helped get across that theme passing passing it back to you asher since you're apparently leading this discussion i've already made up my mind and i I, I don't really you know my i don't care what you guys vote i know you're not gonna vote for me i'm not i'm I'm not the mafia yeah that's the that's um, the annoying thing because i don't think you're the mafia yeah Yeah. no i totally agree that you're not the mafia i'm not the fucking mafia i just know i just have no taste yeah Yeah. it's funny because a seven out of ten is basically like that's like the five out of ten of like normal ratings you know but we're we're trying yeah that's like a good we're trying to we're trying to do objective ratings when we say five out of ten we do mean it was an average film. Yeah, like yeah. And, totally. Mediocre. And a five out of ten is worth watching. Yeah, that's why. That's yeah, how I, I think of it. If it's yeah. over five or five, uh, five and above, yeah. then it's worth watching. Yeah, I Friends, rated. I would. I don't believe you would advise people to not see this film. Yep, exactly. There is no way. I would never recommend this film to anyone. I'd recommend Sharknado over this film. <laughs> that is Sharknado is a better film than this. Well, I guess we can't do Sharknado um, <laughs> in, this, in this podcast <laughs> Next anymore. week's episode Andrew canceled. ruined that for us. The, the, there are so many B films that I enjoy more than this. But uh, you can't say, actually, please don't they list them. actually comedic. How please many, how many B movies can you list? No. And not the B movie that were actually as well made. Because like, think about the actual directing like behind this film. I thought it was like had some fantastic angles and shots. Can you compare that to any like don't, horror B movies? Don't ask don't answer that question because these will be films we will not Because be it doing. will be used against you. I mean well. I can see where you're coming from with angles and shots, but I think the directing was weak. In, in, the in what sense, sense was that, it weak? All right, and so now everyone gets on the car and we walk over here for 
one minute and 30 seconds. Well, there's a cut where there's two things going on both sides and there's two conversations happening at the same time. And you're somehow supposed to think that this is entertaining or followable under any stretch of the imagination. But don't worry, it's fine because it was a comedy. And I mean, it's I allowed to be that. I don't know about you, Andrew. I did not have issue following that scene. Maybe I'm just, you know, big brained enough, but I could understand what was happening in that scene. They're just showing this, you know, they're showing the actual play on the stage happening. And then they're showing like the build up to what's going to happen because then you see, oh, everything's fine on the stage, but backstage there's a bomb. The characters are all freaking out. You know, they need to take pills. Um, their manager, Philbin, he's, you know, shoving pills down that guy's throat, trying to get people on stage. So it's showing everything's fine on stage, but backstage everything's chaos. Everything was not fine on stage. That was a rehearsal, and and they were dropping. Uh, well, everything. obviously, at the end there was um, a there was a bomb. So well, I'm not going to say not that what was I was fine. Talking about. Well, but, what are you but, talking about? Like, that's just like, seemed like a random the, point. There was the shot of on stage, and then there was the more chaotic shot backstage. But yeah. the shot that was on stage was also chaotic because you had the other lead singer. He was like. I don't know, he was having a, a crisis moment and, and he wasn't, you know, uh, performing and, and other girls are kind of like wandering around like, I don't actually know what I'm doing. Um, and then you can kind of see some parts of backstage. My problem with that film, sorry, that scene is why the hell did, I'm going to call him the Phantom, put the bomb in that trunk and then how come just he when everyone... so many innocent people. He didn't. <laughs> no one died there. They all got off and then it exploded. No, oh, did it? Yeah. No, 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 no. I and this this is something that I thought was funny about the film as well. Ha <laughs> ha. They did the parts uh, when when things exploded and when things caught on fire. What happens was he'd he'd chuck the thing and then you'd see it go spiraling into it and then there would be a cut and then very quickly uh, I mean, then there was fire. You know how that, in Star that Wars... scene where the car blew up, we, we were supposed to understand that those people died. Because oh, okay. we saw the cuts, and right. obviously we could see because they didn't do it so quickly that we couldn't see the people magically disappear and suddenly oh. it was on fire well, I, I, in, I, a, in only a few frames. I kind of thought that they had hopped off. I followed them hopping off, and then you're right, there was a cut and they weren't there. Uh, yeah, maybe that's actually. I'm pretty sure a they were. I'm pretty sure they of died that, of the quality of the the crafting of the film. Uh, I still fucking enjoyed it. Yeah, same. Yeah, it, was, it was it was wild. I want to watch that again. Yeah, I want to yep. watch that when I'm not sober. I think that would terrify me. What? Yeah, <laughs> I think I think that this film is is would would make me uncomfortable because I found it very strange. Yeah, um, I think it's an uncomfortable. It's not like Requiem for a Dream sort of uncomfortable because yeah. Requiem for a Dream is actually compelling. Um, but th- I don't say this is compelling. It was just like such a wild. It was enthralling. Wild. It was a, That's what I found. Yeah, it was, it was a waste of time. It's like going to a freak no, show. This was so fun. You're totally the mafia, bro. Sorry, can't change my Lewis, opinion. You're, you're the mafia. But um, Asher, he's yeah. the mafia. We have to work together to bring him down and save the village. There's uh, no way this guy thinks it's that good. Well, you're going to be surprised I, I when I reveal both my of card. You. I believe both of you. This is so That's weird. That's the annoying thing because I find myself believing that Andrew genuinely feels I this way. I hate this film. But then I can't imagine Asher thinking that this was one of the greatest <laughs> films ever or that it was Dude, just average. A seven. Seven. I know. That's why I'm saying I can't oh, yeah, imagine yeah, yeah, yeah. if you had to go at least two points above. Well, yeah. our, our mutual friend, uh, the other Asher, who recommended that we watch That's this right. film. That's right. He we... rated this a 10 out of 10. Yeah. And I'm not, a, I don't even like him that much. So I was really, <laughs> I was really willing to not like this film. I was like, okay, I can't wait to give this a five out of 10 so I can feel superior being like, oh yeah, dude, your 10 out of 10 is my five out of 10. Go get fun. <laughs> but I just, it was just so fun. I, I just was like, damn it. Even though I hate, I hate this dickhead. I just I, like this film so much. When I was watching this film, I thought he trolled us all. <laughs> he was totally trolling us because there's no way he thinks this film is good. Well, there is no way he would rate this film no, a ten out of ten. I think he might have legitimately. He was mega done that. trolling us. I think he's really caught up in the cult, um, cult aspect of this yeah, film. Probably, and I, I think that he knew that it would be divisive between us. Yeah. Um, I think he, 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 he secretly he told me that he thinks that. Um, Oh fuck! What was it? I think he actually said that you would enjoy it, but you wouldn't. So, <laughs> That's funny. So that is Lewis uh, would not enjoy it, and yeah. Andrew would. So that's actually the reverse yeah. right now. Hmm. I wonder what, how that will influence my <laughs> my choice of who the um, mafia let's is. Let's talk about the final elephant in the room sure. as to why he recommended it. Yeah. Uh, our friend Asher is a big fan of Berserk, which is a manga. Oh, series. Yeah, another reason that he thinking. recommended it, and I'll tell uh, you about that later. And the costume of the Phantom oh, yeah. must have inspired. Yeah, like it's so weird because it's not like a medieval fant- like a fantasy, you know, film that you'd think would get inspiration for the story of Berserk. Yeah, it's just such a weird it, film to choose. The, the resemblance between uh, the Phantom's costume and the character Griffith. Yeah, uh, when when everything has gone bad and he's you know with all his 
friends at the yeah. end and he's been tortured. Spo- oh, yeah, th- they're part alert. of the, the, the thing where I, I don't get that. Yeah, no, don't on. worry. I'm just quick. No, no, this, this is right. A, this the is listeners quick... don't understand either, but no, you, that... you boys jack one another no, off no, to anime. No, it's fine. And it's, no, this, that's... Shut up! Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is fine. This is a real quick thing, but you've yeah, made yeah. it longer than it had to be, and now you've wasted everyone's time. I'm so sorry. Asher, you have wasted the listener's time. He's on the offensive, Asher. He's the mafia. I'm just saying. You're both the mafia, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, sorry, oh. I was distracted from what I was saying. Yes, anyway, they look incredibly similar. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> that's all. And, that's, and, that's uh, and why, I can confirm that's why he recommended that I, it. I googled after this Griffith's Griffith costume, and I scrolled down in Google Images, and you guys can do this yourself. And uh, they, they aren't <laughs> Try lying. this at home. Try this at home. You don't have to watch <laughs> Berserk. Um, you can find out that, that Just it look is at images of the characters, and you'll similar. get the story. Look, 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 yeah. look, look, look. But it's enough. You've wasted everyone's time enough already, <laughs> sure. Asher. Sure, let me waste a little bit more. Okay. The other reason I think Asher uh, really likes this film is because one of his uh, favourite actresses uh, of all time is in it, uh, Rachel Hunter, who was in uh, the original uh, Suspiria. Rachel Hunter? Did I get that wrong? Oh Isn't God, her so name much. like Jessie or something? No, no, no. It's definitely not Jessie. It's, it, it's Jessica it's Rachel, or something? Rachel Hunter. Rachel Hunter sounds like someone... I'm going to Google Rachel Hunter because that oh, sounds like a is, modern is so person. so bad. Well, there was, there was um very unprofessional podcasting, boys. Yeah. Jessica Harper. Rachel Hunter was... Yeah, Rachel Hunter is a New Zealand is, yeah, supermodel. Yeah, she is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was... Th- that's Stacey's mum. Rachel Hunter is Stacey's mum. I actually Jesus have met... Jesus I, I saw Rachel Hunter. Anyway, <laughs> she is not... <laughs> How did you fuck oh that up? <laughs> Look, the film! The film! The film. Uh, Jessica Harper stars in Suspiria and also this film, uh, Phantom of the Paradise. And Asher, our mutual friend, is, a, is, is just enthralled by this actress. And apparently, he, she followed him on Instagram... Uh, just after we watched uh, Suspiria uh, a month or two ago, mm. which was really, really weird. Her taste in men is as good as her acting skill. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, relatively poor. Wait, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Yeah. Damn. That's the thing, because I don't like her acting, but it fit in with this film where it's going for, like, every character is a bit quirky and goofy. Like, I don't see any actual conviction in her performance or in Suspiria. We're not talking about Suspiria, obviously, no. but, you know, it just, she felt very... You know, look, 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 stilted. Look, look. I thought let's, she let's was way back. better in this hey, film than in Suspiria. Let's get back. But that's because it was more of a comedy I want to ask Lotus a question. Yeah. I want to ask Go ahead. What are, ask some, me what are some things that you would criticize about this film? Um, basically, it would just be what we've already gone over, which is like the issues with the writing. Okay. So it would be like, you know, oh, there's this guy, um, like... It just as the the boss one is like we need to find someone who's you know going to be the next big star in this film then he's like wait and he notices right before him is his next big star that sort of stuff and then it's um also the quick pace even though i enjoyed that because it moved the film quickly along and it's trying to get because you know it's parroting the phantom of the opera so i understand why it's moving along wait quickly. really yeah so i don't <laughs> shut what? up shut the fuck up <laughs> you get out of here what, what was my point? That's um, deep. So I guess basically, even though it's going for this quick pace, I would have liked a bit more exploration of moments such as the prison scene because we only see like a few moments where Winslow's in the prison and he's sort of like, oh, I'm innocent, get me out of here. And then he's working away and it's like, it's the convenience of him just managing to escape from prison and, you know, runs all the way, like he escapes in a box, you know, lands <laughs> that outside of the box. fantastic. I know, I loved it, but I can understand if you, if you're someone like Andrew, who I guess goes for like pure writing and, like I don't mean to sit, like put you down, but like doesn't go for the experience that the film presents you. Then I can understand having issues with that. Um, it was also my biggest issue was the reveal of Swan because that's the moment where I was like, okay, you need to have some solid writing for this point. But the reveal was basically like, how did um, Winslow pick out that exact tape from all those other reels to find out? Oh, this is Swan's history. And it's so convenient that Swan right. it just, was it like was just a nondescript. Swan just totally um, reveals his entire back, um, his entire backstory, being yeah. like, "Well, I'm going to kill myself." And then, and the camera, it's meant to be a single camera shot, but the camera is yeah, changing within that shot. There was another shot. camera yeah. shot, and, um, and that's the sort of continuity or um, convenience yeah. stuff that I was that I was mentioning before is is worth criticism. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it was I think like I think that these things ought to take. You know, if if a ten out of ten film is the perfect film, and all of these criticisms that you've listed apparently only take off one point five, because uh, because a film mm. is not just writing. You know, if I want a great story, then you know why why do they make a film? Why don't they just write a book? It's because there are way more aspects to the film, like you know the the, vi- the sure. visual and the audio that I take in. And I guess I under like I appreciate this is crazy. Like when I enjoy a comedy, like you know. Like the Simpsons, I'm not going for fan, you know fantastic writing where it's like oh there's all these plot developments you know uh, a, a story that makes sense you know characters acting as they should. I just appreciate the comedy. Maybe maybe that's just easy for me to disconnect myself uh, for comedy from the actual story. But um yeah, I just focus on the comedy. I just love the chaos of it. It felt mm. it felt like um 
like I actually haven't seen the Rocky Horror Picture Show, but from the idea I get of it, and Andrew's probably hating me right now if he's genuine because he thinks that Rocky Horror Picture Show is way better than Phantom of the Paradise. It is. Yeah, but it, it <laughs> is. Okay, okay. Do you, w- that's that's not never mind. Sorry, yeah, it is neither oh, here nor there. Um, I was just saying the idea that I've always got from the Rocky Horror Picture Show is that it's just like this extravagant sort of experience. It's like all these people in these crazy costumes, these crazy songs, but it's good just singing. you know out of out of this world. And that's what I got with this film. So that's just good, why I enjoyed it, it so much. But the difference between these two films is that the Rocky Horror Show has good singing, an actual meaningful message, proper development, and Susan Sarandon, pe- pe- <laughs> people who learn something of value rather than just. I've, a pointless experience. What do you think about um, my point? What I think the, the message of the film was going for was like, um, I guess the passion and love that someone has for their art. Because the story was that Leach, he creates this um, work, but it's, you know, quote unquote, stolen from him by Swan and they created and he has no um, artist, you know, he has no control over his work. And so the, it's sort of a tragedy where he basically becomes a slave to Swan so they can have some input in Swan using his work. And then it's like, oh, even though Swan's given him this, you know, minuscule amount of respect for his work, he's also at the end going to steal it all back from Winslow and so that's going to you know push Winslow all the way back to going for revenge and in the end he manages to kill Swan thus killing himself which voids the contract this you know sort of fantastical contract which somehow with the devil yeah goes against like the laws of physics where they can't kill themselves and well, in it was, the end, it's established as the devil yeah yeah and in the end he he, in a sense, he does I manage go by to many names. <laughs> in the end, he does manage to save his music because the contract goes void, so Swan can't use it. But he also dies, and it's showing that he put so much care and love into this work. Like we see that it's like what, like eight hundred pages or something at the start, where he's like, "Oh, I just love this work of Faust. It's not finished yet. I need to go." You just see all that effort and passion he has for this work, you know. And I guess I just identify with that. And that was the main film, um, the main message of the film for me. So that would you... be a nice arc. That would be a nice arc if they spent enough time. Uh, properly developing that, I thought so, that I thought they did plenty. That was enough to develop it. What 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 more do you think? That was sort necessary? of thing is supposed to have real emotion to it. Uh, the comedy, like that, to me, what you described is like a really tragic story. That's I, I will really say I serious. Thought, and... I thought the moments where we see um, Winslow sort of you know like very sympathetically uh sadly working on his story while he's locked up in that cage and you can see he's thinking of phoenix he's like you know oh this is you can see he's like Did really depressed see? but there's phoenix in the costume and he's like you know it's all for her i want to see her bring this work to life but i thought they did a great it's job it's amazing that you could see all that when he was in a ridiculous costume he was in a sound booth that is totally unrealistic he was playing the piano with his gloves still on he couldn't speak he had to speak with but a voice box the whole scene that's because every the film's part trying of to the tell film a message. was a comedy because the film's trying to tell a message in those instances i don't need like you know like one for one like realism in these moments i can understand the message they're going for and it's the other aspects outside of the the pure like writing itself which i enjoyed so that's why i was over able to overlook these like little issues of someone wearing gloves and not being able to have the dexterity in their fingers like that's just not something i'd ever think of as bringing this film down even like a bunch of those little issues that's those are never the sort of things that would stop me from enjoying this film if you felt that a lot of things in this film were intentional for the chaos for the experience yeah then that might imply that you should also think that these things are a problem because they should have thought of them because they've gone for so many other intentional things. I right? did think they were a problem, so, but not to the extent that it stopped it from being great. That's like okay. what's holding it back from the 1.5. Like if they had a solid story, I still don't know if I'd go like a 10, but like for me, there's like an oceans of difference. That's not a proper measurement. There's like, you know, a massive difference between <laughs> like in five oceans. <laughs> I get you. Five o- oceans of difference between like an 8.5 and a nine, you know, like it's not like it's just like there's literally like a one out of 10 difference between the two ratings. For me, it's like with earthquakes, you know how like a six point, like a well, six O is like 10 times, okay, Lewis, you know? Your, your scale is fucked. That's what if, I mean. But yeah, it's so like, then like, your scale is fucked. Okay, would you, you guys, trust would you guys <laughs> say that a 10 out of 10 film is like, think of whatever your 10 out of 10 film or musical, whatever, would you say that's, on, that's only twice as good as whatever you'd rate in the same medium as a five out of 10? I would never ever rate a film 10 out of 10. I've never rated well, something Well, that's why I said any. 10 anything you'd never rate 10 out of 10 as like this no. is your maximum enjoyment of any media form i wouldn't it's not my enjoyment it's how good it was he's the mafia that's it no, doesn't relate but he's the no mafia. Lewis, that's that it's not how good it's not how it was entertaining for me that's irrelevant how good was the item is what determines my rating but how can you disconnect those between your opinions like are you saying there's some objective i, rating for I it? sort of i try to approach them as sort of logically as i can but you can't disconnect yourself from that 
Well, like, yeah, look, he's saying that, yeah, no one obviously can physically yeah. achieve that objectivity, but he's trying to ratchet. But you're uh, like, that you're way. taking away your enjoyment as a factor in rating the film. Like, you don't say, okay, I really enjoyed this, but I thought it was it badly is, written. It is a factor, but clearly not to the extent that your enjoyment is. Yeah, like, I just, I literally just rate things on enjoyment. And I, I factor in logic, because that's a part of what makes me enjoy it. But I, I don't think I can disconnect them to the point where I'm like, this film, I enjoyed it so much, but it was badly written, so I'm giving it, like, a 5 out of 10. I just can't do that. Anyways, we've been going on that for a, Do you have any other questions for me? Because I guess I'm sort of the target here, because I'm the highest one on this film. I've already written my um my vote for mafia i did it about uh 10 minutes ago that makes me worry it's gonna be me um uh, <laughs> oh no time will tell uh, it'd better be uh, you because you're definitely the mafia uh, oh, we, i mean i'm literally not are so. we gonna vote then uh, do you have any final comments asha uh, uh guys i'm probably gonna fuck this whole thing up <laughs> when i vote and um and 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 probably you know vote off the person that the mafia is also voting off and, and, and in which case lose, like I did uh, the first time. Um, but I, I really think that um, this was a strange, good film. I, I am surprised that you rated it 3.5. It's the truth. I think that it's more surprising, perhaps, that Lewis rated it 8.5. But it's at the end of the day, I could roll a dice a two-sided dice known as a coin um, and, <laughs> a and, you'd, and, you'd, and you'd actually flip it even I'd you'd flip, flip, it. I'd flip yeah. it and i would be happy with whatever result um yeah <laughs> the Bro, thing you is at least try to win at least. i mean yeah i'm gonna try to win. I'm, okay. I'm winning this <laughs> all right <laughs> guys i'm not the mafia that's the victory in and of itself what <laughs> makes me sad is i do see i it does feel like andrew is genuinely like if, well not a fan but like you know taken aback that i've rated this film so highly and that makes me think you know, okay, maybe he he does he did genuinely rate this film three out of five, and I, well, I'm not going to say no, no, it, but no, like three point five, three point five. But I would be so shocked if you actually gave this three point five. I feel like so many people would be like, would at least think there's like a minimum standard that this film has achieved with um its directing style and its comedy, and I guess just what it was going for. If, I guess the I minimum, guess it's like if the minimum the, standard of the counselor was higher than this film. But you, so you, but you actually wrote this the um, rated this the same as the counselor, did yeah. you not? Three point five. Yeah, the counselor was bumped up to three point five because of its baseline stuff, and this one did have some funny enough moments to make it more tolerable in that sense. But to think that this film is that much better than that film is a huge mistake, and that lets me know you're the mafia. I guess one final question I have for you: Can you never enjoy like anything absurd? Like, does something always have to be? like straight to the point like if it's not if you're not being serious it's not worth taking it seriously it needs to be absurd in the right way as such uh, controlled chaos okay. rather uh so to me this film was uh totally pointless things didn't seem thought through uh the arc you described was definitely there uh but more time should have been taken to make it tolerable um make it more meaningful make it more poignant uh there wasn't time to think about how good that arc was because it happened in two seconds it was weak development okay um shall we vote i'd, I'd continue asking you questions but i feel like i'm just gonna be painting myself in a bad light either way if you guys vote for me i'm just gonna reveal that i have a horsey card and you guys are gonna be depressed so i mean just go ahead i don't know who to vote for well <sighs> wait hey guys <laughs> if i were to ask you who to vote for yeah and then but, but you have to lie about who you're voting for. Who are you going to vote for, Lewis? <laughs> I was thinking, um, when we do our reveal, Fuck. we write down the name and then we all share them. Yes. And then, like, one of us, whoever is the mafia, they always say, it was me. Or if they get caught, they say, ah, oh, shit, or something. Mm -hmm. Should we reveal our cards at the same time? Or like, not the same, but, like, we reveal who we voted for, then we reveal our cards and we, yeah, all, yeah, and yeah, we yeah. commentate yeah. on Sounds that. Sounds good. Sounds yeah. good. I like it. Okay, let's vote down, write, write down our vote. Okay. Oh, you guys should both vote for me. It'll be hilarious. <laughs> Imagine that, the turner, the confirmed villager. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. It's him. I think it's Asher. There's, I think, no, there's I think, no way it's Asher. I think he got too confident at the end. No, you're feeling you're feeling desperate. Dude, like I'm, you're gonna find out in like less than a you're minute. You're feeling desperate, so that's why. Uh, uh, Dude, you're no gonna find way, out. It's so <laughs> Dude, because he's like Asher might be voting for me. Andrew. 
l- look at my eyes, <laughs> listeners, listen to my voice. You're going to find out in less than a minute that I'm not the mafia. And I think that Asher has, oh my gosh, it's fucking you. Have we written who the mafia is? Oh my gosh, it's him, <laughs> Andrew. We've written things down though, haven't we? I have, written, have. Have we but... written it down? Just put it on the table. <sighs> okay. Oh my, oh my. <laughs> All right. Are, are you, you well, we get ready stop, to reveal? Stop. Okay, are okay, we, okay. Are oh, we going to we're going change? To, we're going to, no. No, fuck um, no, I just need to. <laughs> I just need to collect myself because I literally think <laughs> technically nothing too crazy has happened yet. But no, none of us have uh, voted. No, none of us. I, have I've just been giggling it, and it's freaking him I out. I just want to say for the record, <laughs> I could totally just imagine now that Asher actually gave this a nine out of ten, <laughs> and he thought this was like an, a fantastic film, like maybe echoing my points. But I think just for the record, I'm going to go for Andrew also out of a moral position because I think it's <laughs> disastrous that he rated this three out of five. Anyways, no, try to win. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Try to win. But the thing is, I the only way I can possibly win, I've got to weigh it up, is if Asher actually voted for you. Because I know he's not going to vote for um, himself. And I know you're not going to vote for him. You're going to vote for me. So if I do want to go on the side of potentially winning, I have to vote for you just by odds. I see the logic. Yeah. What if I told you <laughs> I'd vote for Asher then too? What? Wait, in what instance? Like you're saying... Like, develop on that. You w- you're you saying you would vote for Asher? Do you really think it's him? Because I actually really think it's you, and you've got desperate. Be- okay, I'll say, I thought it was you, but maybe I was getting a bit too into myself, being like, damn, Andrew's like, he doesn't like this film. I really enjoyed this. I- and maybe I was, like, being swayed by my conscience, being like, we I can't let someone have that. We opinion. don't have time. Let's... <sighs> right. Five seconds. Okay, well, I've got my I've got my name down. You're, you're, you're not supposed to write your own name, Lewis. N- not my name. <laughs> okay, all right. Ready? I'm it's... changing. Lol. <laughs> I mean, haha. I don't say lol. Okay. Three, two, two. one. Lewis. Asher. Lewis. All right, guys, let's reveal our cards. Three, two, one. Fuck. Knew it. Fuck, guys. I changed my mind at No, the stop, guys. Here's the crazy <laughs> thing. No, you. wait. No, guys, please listen to me. Here's the, here's, here's the crazy thing. No, listen guys. No, wait, please. Andrew. This is, is going to upset you so much, Lewis. I'm so sorry. This film for me was actually a one out of ten. <laughs> I, I hated this film. <laughs> it was, what? I wanted to stand up and leave a quarter of the way through. I despise oh this my film. Gosh. I would never recommend it to everyone. And I was so destroyed when you guys were starting to vote it so high because I was like, damn, I could have hidden really well by rating it high and because they think it's high too. And whereas in reality, I think this film was trash. Oh my God. Uh, so I'm right. Garbage. I'm right. <laughs> you're, you're te- you were telling the truth, but with a little bit of a technicality that it was actually 2.5 stars more than it was. Yes, it became quite fortunate because in a sense, in one sense, because Lewis saw that I was being truthful and it yeah. turns out that in this scenario, I was, I had to be truthful yeah. in order to save myself because you guys were thinking <laughs> I was the mafia. And, and Lewis, you, you, you sure you're not the mafia? Yeah, I'm are you totally sure, sure you weren't lying that whole time. D- you can check my notes. Are you notes. sure that you liked that film? 8. Yes, 5 I thought it was 10. fucking fantastic. I liked the film too. It was a great film, but yeah, eight point five is very high. Andrew's probably was, thinks we're both fuckwits. I was for thinking of like seven and eight point five. I was literally going close to nine. It was like and when the ending yeah. scene when we're going through all the scenes, it's showing all the like all the chaos. You know, people being well, attacked. Lewis I was like, did this is such a great watching the credits. I yeah, but I, I also had that because that was also because I genuinely enjoyed it. It was also because Andrew I wanted to see like, if there's anything at the we, end. Should we be watching this? Can we just skip forward? He yeah. says, mm. man. So this is... Man, man, Like, man. to me, a 1 out of 10 is like one of the worst, like, films you've there, ever seen. Uh, there are B films that I liked more than this. Jesus. I like Sharknado more than this. I think, Shar- like, compared to this, Sharknado is funny and the good type of absurd. Is it? Uh, was it literally just the writing you just couldn't get behind? It was the writing. It was the story. It wasn't special. The music sucked. The music. I love sucked. the music so the music much. Was bad. Oh god! And it never stopped. They had such the a variety music of songs. Never stopped. What <laughs> variety? They played the same. Every song sounded like the they've same. Got, they've got like doo wop. They've got like some. Even no, like... the pop songs sounded the same, <sighs> compared to the slow songs. <laughs> the only song that was. Fuck you. The only <laughs> Asha, song Asha started recording that was actually unique and special was the woman solo when she was like, oh, I don't know if I can sing. But even then, it wasn't her. <laughs> it yeah. Was... Well, at least we don't think it was her. This film was so trash. The counselor was way better than this film. Oh my film. gosh. Damn. That's absurd. Damn. Like my favorite song was, I think I would have said this, but um, when Swan's stage play is actually coming to life and they've got 
like um they got like the three guys coming out as kiss doing their song like the crowd's going crazy and they're like they're, the absurdity they're, they're, in, they're in costumes that look a bit yeah, similar to and kiss. they're like they're like cutting off people's limbs with like the handle of the guitar and stuff and then beef comes out and he's strutting around and like just doing this random chicken dance and that shit i loved it God, so um, stupid. Lewis, Asher had a, a question for you, and yeah. it was, did Lewis point out the cabinet of Dr. Caligari I thought of that. during the Somebody I, Super I Like did You song? I did notice that. I did notice that. What because, is all that about? Um, Sorry, what so are you talking about? Doctor, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, it was a German horror film. It was based on, like, it's called the, the art style is called Expressionist, and it's basically, you take... At least, as we saw in Doctor, the cabinet of Doctor Caligari, they take like architecture and they distort it. So instead oh, of like a perfectly stage. symmetrical sort of, um, you know, like square, like a building, they'll make it like all jilted and like different sort of geographical shapes. And I did notice that, but it wasn't like it was a big feature of the film. So I wasn't going to say, oh, they're taking big influence. I was like, okay, that sort of looks like the style they're going from. Mm. So um, yes, to our to our listener, the other Asher, I did notice that, but I didn't comment on it comment on it on this uh on this review. So I can't really properly say that I did pointed out because you guys could just no. say you're just saying that in, in, after the fact all right all right yeah. all right fuck do you guys did you guys really be honest now i know i know you were, <laughs> all okay, right i, I had I the trap you. and troll along <laughs> I, I was actually I in the mafia yeah, no, no, good question so when i was did you actually just, like I was that trying film? to figure out what to rate it i was like fuck do i rate this four or do i rate this a seven i, I, I <laughs> whoa yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was <laughs> like do i do i or do i not but I just really want to watch it again, and and because of that, I couldn't rate it a four. Um, okay, because I sure. I really do want to watch it what, again. What um what made you vote for Lewis over me? Because uh, I totally thought I was going to get out. I thought eight point five was just way too high. Um, and all of the things that he was pointing out, I thought would annoy him more than just one point five stars away from um a ten. Uh, I thought that uh, what you all the criticisms that you were uh talking about, you the were basically yeah, yeah 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 all these and, and the craft like the the poor quality of, of, of the film in some ways um, and the conveniences. It was just, I think, too much to uh, have a still 8.5 rating. And I could see you giving this a 6.5 or even a 7. I don't know. I, like, at some points, to, I was feeling like a, six, yeah. uh, like a 6, like, flat. But I guess for me, it's like, I, I do have to look at what the film's genre is because, like, what are they going for? So if the film is meant to be a horror, but I find it more comedic than anything, I might laugh, but I'm, I'm probably going to give it a lower rating, you know, like a lower relative rating because it's like, okay, you're trying to, you know, get some, like, gripping emotion out of me and I don't get that. So that's, like, a bad film in that sense. I guess mm. I rate the films on what they're going for. So if this was like a pure drama, like if they're actually trying to do like a like a tribute to the Phantom of the Opera and they're just doing like a sort of more modern, you know, take with, you know, modern music, that sort of thing. Um, and this wasn't at all com- like comedic and it wasn't at all intention- intentionally absurd. Then I probably would have said this was a bad film, you know, like three or four out of ten. Uh, that makes it, sense. It's yeah. literally just the fact that it was going for comedy. It was being, it was over the top. It was, it was having so much fun being absurd and over the top and chaotic that I was getting into it. Where I'm like, this doesn't make any sense, and I'm just loving it so much. Yep, Lewis, we're right. And yep. Andrew, you are wrong. Is the tasteless gentleman. So you won this uh, episode. This is yeah. your second well victory done. as the mafia. I mean, I won, but it doesn't feel that right. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Due Good. to the kerfuffle. We yeah, have yeah. we have the moral victory, Asher. That's the main thing here. Yeah. Uh, on one like on one hand, I appreciate the irony. Uh, I'm sure this one might be entertaining. <laughs> yeah. uh, but <laughs> that moment when you revealed, no, guys, I thought you were going to say, oh, guys, I thought this was awesome. You're like, yeah. no, it was a one out of 10. I was just draw. Like, oh that's my God. like three. It, I thought it was really difficult to argue 3.5. I was really stressing. I was like, how am I going to argue it was that good? So what did you enjoy? How am I going to argue it was that good? What did you enjoy about this film? Because my true opinion is that it sucks. Shit. And on that. But I'm not just before we end. I just, what were the few, Ah! what were the few things you did enjoy about this film? Like, Uh, were there any? Because a one out of 10 to me is like, like basically nothing. Would you ever rate anything a zero out of 10? Or is that? Probably not. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't couldn't do a zero out of 10. Okay. No. Uh, the lowest I might go is 0.5. Yeah. Or 0.1. I could I could do a 0.1 if I really ah, hated it's, it's it. It's better than that. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, uh, the only part that I enjoyed about this film was the little scene that I described where he is running into the record office. That was the only scene that you enjoyed? That was the only oh part. Gosh. I was a complete waste of time. If I were watching that film by myself and not under the idea that I could be a mafia, which I was this time, yeah, uh, I would have left after a third, if that. God damn. This is insane to I me. I keep losing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I, I should have voted for Andrew because I literally... 
I guess I was wrong in the end because I thought there's no way he thinks it's what do you this mean? bad. You did. Or did you vote for me? Yeah, yeah. You swapped, because you at the end, your opinion. at the end, you I, got I me just, because you started laughing because I was like, "Holy shit!" It, that Andrew and I have been playing though. against each other. I, I needed to, yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah, but, and I needed to keep my mouth yeah. shut. I wanted to do it for the moral victory of being right in that moment where I was like, "No, I think it is Asher." Even if Andrew's going to vote for me and Asher won't vote for himself, so, no, I should vote. for I him. wrote down Lewis that time when I said I've already decided about ten minutes ago, and then I crossed it out and I wrote down Andrew, and then and then I crossed that out and I wrote down Lewis. What made you change? to him for a split second uh i don't really know <laughs> <laughs> you're so know. easily I, I, I literally i thought you actually didn't mind the film i thought you were rating it a middling a middling rating uh but but no why did you choose wow. to go for rating it a three when you rated it a one? i think he said because he thought that we I thought would you also rate it, low. it too <laughs> <laughs> and and it sucks that we did the slight rule change this episode because if one of you had went first, said, yeah. yeah, I thought it was seven point five, I'd be like, oh boy, <laughs> time to hide. Yeah, <laughs> it was eight point five. No, I definitely oh, think we yeah. should keep this this yeah, model. Yeah, I it's, like it's, this. I think it's working. Uh, just not the way that you thought. Yeah, but you it, still won. So stop complaining. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you did a fine job. You cunt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking God. God. You know, sometimes when we record these, we end and we're like, yeah, that was. How fucking thrilling was that? Yeah. And now now I feel like a sh- total shitty. Yeah, yeah, I feel these, deflated. The these first guys time... are just going to cry themselves to sleep Because not only did, did I lose this episode, I've also been <laughs> lost by Andrew's s- respect. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. pretty much, yeah. That's that's all right. That's all right. I didn't need your respect anyways. It doesn't matter. I never thought I had it, so that's good. Um, so overall, <laughs> I would not recommend this film. Overall, I would uh, recommend you watch this film with your friends. Don't watch it alone. It I scary. would absolutely recommend this film whether you have one friend or two friends, whatever the number or of no friends you friends. have. Or no friends. Exactly. You yeah. friendless loser. <laughs> I can also speak close to the microphone. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Content. This was the fourth episode of Cinemafia. We oh were God. reviewing The Phantom of the Paradise by what director, Asher? Uh, Ingmar Bergman. Ingmar Bergman. <laughs> That's right. Brian De Palma. Brian De Palma. Yeah. And uh, yeah, join us next week when we shall be reviewing something. And we shall probably edit it in right now. Hey guys, next week we'll be reviewing a film that is currently still in cinemas here, uh, Alita Battle Angel. We heard that got some mixed reviews, so look forward to that next week. Yeah. Good night, Thanks guys. Thanks for joining us. All See good you morning. Later. See you later. All good afternoon. Goodbye forever. Bye. See you next time. Bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I spilt Coke on the recording table and I'm going to proceed to table suck it. <laughs> keep them, keep them, keep the actual mic away from the liquid. Ah, oh, it's good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, thanks, Andrew. He got me a towel. <laughs> this is your mic, okay? Thanks for listening to Cinemafia. <laughs>